The compass is becoming more inaccurate every day. It's not a result of faulty manufacturing. It's because the North Pole itself is changing. Follow me now. This problem is actually so drastic that workers at Tampa International and Peter O'Knight airports are rushing to make changes. And Brooks Garner, our meteorologist and local science, do we dare say nerd, spent the day looking into this polar shift. When most people hear North Pole, they think of Santa Claus. And while he'll always be at the very top of the world... There's also a magnetic pole, which is produced by um, fluctuations or flow of, of iron in the core of the Earth. Dr. Chris Connor of USF explains that the constantly moving molten iron acts like a giant car alternator, creating a magnetism on a planetary scale with a magnetic north and South Pole. But over the last few decades, it's been moving, and now it's moved all the way from northern Canada into northern Siberia. Which means what your compass shows as north in Tampa Bay isn't really north. And this is a problem for airports. When a pilot navigates, he needs to find which is the correct runway to land in or take off on. So he uses his compass and his cockpit to orient himself. That'll tell, that'll tell him that he's on the correct runway. Robert Burr of TIA says runway 36 originally pointed due north to 360 degrees. Or it did, before the magnetic shift. Now it points just right at 10 degrees north, even though physically it hasn't moved. While the runway in question will always point to the true geographic North Pole, because the magnetic North Pole has now shifted, pilots who use compasses lining up on the runway may think they're in the wrong spot, unless this problem is corrected. So TIA has resolved to paint new numbers to match the pilot compass readings. Now runway 36 is runway 1. But this may only be a temporary fix. Several times per million years, Earth's magnetic pole does a full flip. At first, it becomes disorganized, with new poles popping up in odd places like the equator, bringing the green and red northern lights to the skies of Florida. The last shift was over 700,000 years ago, leaving some to say we're due. Some people have speculated that there's a shift beginning which may explain this recent fluctuation. But because our lifetimes are a blink of an eye in the geological time scale, it's too soon to tell. <laughs> I just yeah. said I have to backpedal on that nerd <laughs> comment. I said, oh, he's so cute. No one will think I oh, was really cute. calling you. I just want to keep to do his nerd impression because it's so good. <laughs> Who needs an impression? He's here. <laughs> no, Brooks. Exactly. Hey, listen, uh, but you said something interesting to me yes. that, 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 that birds and, and, and mm -hmm. wildlife out there could actually be sure. confused by all of this. If, in fact, birds navigate by compass direction, an internal compass, which some theorize they do, if, in fact, the poles shift, it's possible, and, and this is obviously not going to happen now, but maybe in a couple hundred years or longer, we don't really know. It's possible you could have Canadian geese migrating to Hawaii instead of Canada. Wow. Hey, a North Pole could pop up over Tahiti. You could have northern lights in the south uh, equatorial regions. Pretty wow. crazy to think about. Yeah, it is kind of mind-boggling wow. to think about, yeah. but, but, but it's mm -hmm. serious, too, especially if an instrument, of, sure. if, you're a, if you're a pilot, air or yeah. sea. I mean, your destination. Ten degrees. Be ten degrees doesn't sound like a lot, but if you go one direction for a thousand miles and you're ten degrees oh, off, yeah. that could make all the difference. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's very fascinating. Okay. Thank you for clearing that up. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Nerd. We're both nerds now. I love it. All right.